Hey, hey, y'all. Thanks for vibing with CC and Chi Chi, where we talk about all the hot topics. What's your vibe? Hey, girl. girl. I'm so excited. We have a guest. I'm vibing on a margarita for this conversation. What's your vibe hey. like, Chi Chi? Girl, you already know. It's a big day, honey. We have margarita. Well, no, I lied. I have a Mas Moscato. Mas okay. Mas a little bit, you know. And our uh, guest, what do you have? I saw you pick up a jar. Is that water? Ooh, okay. <laughs> they come okay, professional. Okay. Right. Yeah, now they, they professional. It's We're gonna get into it. Yes, yes, yes. Well, thank you, of course, for joining us. We love our guests Anytime. here. Yes, and we love to hear from male perspective. So, of course, you know, on our show, we do we talk a lot about relationships and things like that from a lady's perspective. So, having a male here is like a big deal because we want to hear how y'all think. So, but before we get into that, introduce yourself. Tell the people a little bit about who you are, your name, whatever you want to fill us in on. Yeah. So, my name is Buka. I go by Buka, the Scrub Investor. So, I am anesthesia provider that turned into an investor. So I've been investing for north of four or five years. I got lucky, it was, I was always inquisitive about learning about money. I love numbers, I'm a math guy at heart. So met mentors, started growing my portfolio, real estate, um, private money lending, you name it. If there's a business and there's money to be made there, I'm there. So I took my passion and I said, you know what? I'm gonna teach as many people as I can. Mm -hmm. I started the YouTube channel and I'm just starting to grow it now. Oh, congratulations. That's awesome. You know, there's always so good to see people with multiple streams of income or building that opportunity. And again, we talk about relationships. We talk about world perspective. We talk about mental health. And I oh, believe yeah. investment, money, financial literacy is things that we need to divulge ourselves in as well. So I'm glad that, you know, you're familiar with that. Yeah, no, I think it's important, especially in the communities that we grow up in, right. that these things are talked about. Relationship, I also, in my on my channel, will speak on things like topics like that because at the end of the day, I am a black male. So mm -hmm. that's important to us because growing up, you heard all this negative tropes about black males. Yeah. And and you know, you it's it's incumbent on it's incumbent on black males to change the narrative. And I think Ooh. we've done a good enough job in the few years, last few, last 10. 15 years doing so so yeah. I'm just an example of that and I'd always love to share so I, so I welcome the conversation yes, yes. yes. that's where it's at. It. like you know black literacy just learning about investment and also medical like I feel like medical as a medical provider uh, us getting into the business side of things is necessary because we have a different perspective on things because a lot of these hospitals nowadays are ran by just peer business people but yep. to get both both mindset is why I'm also intrigued about business and, you know, opening business on helping other people um, with businesses. So kudos to you. And um, I love to see more people doing that. That's yeah. good stuff. We're going to have to bring you back to talk about some entrepreneurial efforts and thinking outside the box when it comes to our money. So keep that in mind. Definitely. Anytime. Let's go ahead and jump into these topics. Yeah. I hope everybody's ready because we want to get into the man's mindset and see if we can come to some type of neutrality, but we'll see. We'll see. Okay. Um, so the first topic is, how do you feel about dating outside of your race or your type? Okay, so could, like, could we split that into two different questions? Okay. Do How do I feel about dating outside of my race? Yeah. And I'll say, are you saying from a man's perspective or a woman, or just both in general? From your perspective as a man, yeah, a man's okay. perspective. Mm -hmm. So um, I say for both parties, I think, I think everybody, you should be, you should have the opportunity to date outside your race. And the reason I say that is you want to give yourself the best chance to get the best outcomes that you want in your life, right? So limiting yourself to, we, we, the world is so vast, limiting yourself to a small portion of individuals. If you, like, if you think about it, African-Americans in the U.S., only 13% of the population. So if you... And out of that, if you think about it, let's just say 50% of that is men, right? Mm -hmm. And 50% is women. So that means I, I would only be dating out of 6.5%. Mm -hmm. That is not a number 
that anyone should, you shouldn't have to be picking from such a small pool of people. You should have the largest pool because then you get the best chance, best option, you know, the best outcomes from that. So my take is, I think any everybody should date outside of their race or should be open to it. Right. I'm not saying you, you can have preferences, but be open to it because here's the, here's the deal. The sooner you take that away from, let's just say from a man's perspective, if I say I, I will only date African-American women or black women, period. Mm -hmm. Well, what ends up happening is you have to take whatever that, uh, that that criteria or that um demographic gives you right mm -hmm. so you you take away your leverage you always want to keep leverage on top of people meaning you always want the most amount of options because it forces the other party to work harder hmm. that makes sense work hard Ooh, work, uh, um, yeah, work harder. harder so you want the lady to work harder for you to notice them is that what you're saying 100 one hundred percent, and and I can go into further on that. So if you think about go it, right, the the type of guys that are, are I can't hold on. Let me make sure Who, which one's married, which one's not. So I want to make married, sure. married, well, okay, and, and class. okay, single. So the type of guy that CC would want, right? Am I saying that correctly? Yes, you are. CC would like that individual. There's a reason you like him. And the reason is he's met criteria that you would like. And as a guy, when you're growing up, you think of these things. You think there's a reason you like the guy who's successful. He knew in the back of his mind that being successful gave him the best chance at women like you mm. or women to, to be able to pick from the women of the top caliber. So this is true. I believe that as, the, as a, for me, I knew that coming up, I knew I had to be in I had to look appealing. I had to be physically attractive to people. Mm -hmm. I had to be financially attractive to people. I had to have a good personality. So I, and that's the reason I attract the amount of women that I attract because I'm, I've set myself up to win. And I think if, if the other, if women do the same thing, you'll set yourself up aside from the group. But what ends up happening is people don't want to compete. They hate but, competition. I, and I, I see what you're saying, but I listen very closely to what you said is going to make them stand out. And a lot of that was superficial things like I got to look good. I got to have money. I got to so, smell good type thing. But what about the heart? Like I heard the personality, but I was just one out of five. OK, so the, the thing, the ultimate thing is you when you see someone on the street, right, you can't tell what their heart is. Right. So that's one of the biggest myths that to me that doesn't make sense is people say, oh, you're it's too superficial. Well, guess what? You've never looked at a guy and said, oh, at the grocery shop, oh, this guy's got a great heart. You base that off of the things that you saw physically, right? You see a guy driving a, a really nice car, a Porsche. You're gonna say, This guy's hard working. How do you know that? He could be uh he could be a crypto scamming. he could mm -hmm. be a scammer right but, but you don't know that now here's the next question when he then puts down his window comes yeah. out the car then you do another assessment because yeah. the human mind right at the end of the day is set for simplicity and to make quick decisions people forget that so yeah. you're making quick decisions off of the, the the superficial stuff initially and that's why i said so many superficial things because that's the first thing you're going to notice in somebody you're not going to notice the the really in-depth stuff, but that's the second. So the thing is this, the superficial stuff is number one. So that's going to attract the people to you. Can now, I add to the clothes on the other stuff, the second stuff, which is the morals and the, the, what the person's actually made of on the inside. That's mm -hmm. the second thing. So, okay. but in order to get to the second thing, you have to at least meet the first criteria. And I think a lot of times women fall short in that. Okay. Okay. To add, because mm -hmm. I know we're talking about these factors that go into play when you are courting or seeing who's eligible prospect wise. Mm -hmm. But okay. initially the question was dating outside your race and making your options as lucrative, most beneficial for you. Yeah. If we are looking at superficial things, we look at skin complexion. Okay. We know black and brown, black women are the highly educated, most educated in the United States. So no, they're, they're most, they, so that's most another, educated. okay. I, okay. I'll give you that. I'll let you finish your point. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Okay. So if we're the most educated, if we are taking good care of ourselves, um, what does that mean though? Taking care of ourselves physically, what? as far okay. as staying in shape, making sure we are kept up, getting these high paying jobs. We're making more money more than ever before. Mm -hmm. 
the only thing that I could see that would be outside of that equation is the leverage when it comes to the amount community. of community, the leverage when it comes to community. Hmm. So, okay. Once again, that's why I asked in the beginning, are you looking at this from a man's perspective? Because I think people misunderstand okay. that men and men and women are going to look for two different types of things. I would date a woman who is unemployed. Hmm. If she oh. met a bunch, I would oh, well, wholeheartedly. I to me, it doesn't even matter. I actually don't care what you do because hmm. I know my hustle is going to beat that, right? So I actually hmm. don't ask, to be honest. I, I'll ask just for conversational because that's we've evolved into that kind of people. It's like a re hmm. reflexive question, right? Yeah. But deep down, as long as you don't do anything crazy, right? You're not like a an OnlyFans model. Then then my mind is going to categorize you in somewhere else, right? I'm going to put yeah. you in a different group. But I might still be cool with you, but I'm going to put you in a different group. Let's just be honest, right? Mm -hmm. um, well, I think a lot of things you said are you are basing it off of. You're, you're hoping that men will judge you the way you judge men. And ah. I can't get like, mm. you need to understand that you can't judge men like you can't expect men to judge you that way because we That's won't. We, we just mm -hmm. can't. Right. So. Um, and then, and, and and this is another thing that, you know, speaking about our community is I remember growing up yeah. when, you know, I grew up, I, we're all Nigerian here. Our, my parents always used to stress to me, you don't pick a, you don't get a career for just having a career. You pick it to, for, for the income you have to make, it has mm -hmm. to make sense. Now I get it. You're going to end up loving what you do. And I'm not disputing that. But at the end of the day, you can't be, let's just say you love, you, you love being a greeter at Walmart. That's not really going to get you far in the world, right? They weren't yeah. going to let you do that, right? So yes, I get it that we are, Black women are the most, what, um, what was the stats? I didn't hear you said educated. We, we are the most educated. We have like the most the degrees as far as. What type of degrees are we getting, right? <laughs> I, I remember, I'll say this, I remember when I was younger, we, we would see people celebrating high school graduations. In my family, we didn't do that. Mm. We we're supposed to do that. So if you're going to school and you're getting, a, and no knock on some of these degrees, I'm, I'm sure people are going to beat me up in the comment section. Mm. But if you have a sociology degree, I'm sorry, like I'm not knocking it, but I can't, I'm not going to give you that like other than like, yeah. like if you've gotten an engineering degree. Because, and this is something else that, as an investor that to me hits home every time. I truly believe that individuals that are black need to major in like out of three out of four of us need to be in the sciences. We need to take it the way other cultures do. I'll be honest. I'll just say we need to look at it the way Asian cultures do. They major in things that make money. Yep. I care about the degree. I'd rather you have an HVAC certificate than have a kinesiology degree you do nothing with. Could care less if you have a master's in kinesiology and do nothing with it. But yet you rack up the debt. I'd rather you have a degree or a certificate as an HVAC technician and do your own thing that way. Cause at least you, your, your plus or minuses, at least you're coming out on top. Cause that mountain debt doesn't help you. So I have a question for you. Um, yes, you mentioned that um, we're Nigerian and I feel like listening to you, you're speaking based on your up, uh, upbringing because that's how I was raised, right? Mm -hmm. That we have to have these high top degrees and things like that. However, mm -hmm. I'm actually doing the same thing to my kids. I'm forcing these things upon my kids, doctor, lawyer, engineer. Now, those are the three things, you know? Mm -hmm. However, is that right? Because nowadays in 2023, there's so many other things you can do nowadays that would make you, that would set you apart. YouTubers are making way money than someone in the hospital that's working all day long. So well, okay. should, before you okay. explain, Okay. We have had, Chi Chi and I have had this conversation before about mm -hmm. income and how much money should, or what your child should be taught to strive for. Okay. Now, although you, I'm, I can't claim fully Nigerian because I don't have, like when I did my 23 and me, it showed that I had some Nigerian in me, but okay. I'm not Nigerian by birth. Like my parents aren't from Nigeria at all. And okay. I do believe that instilling the drive of getting educated, you know, working hard, regardless in different aspects, like maybe it is blogging and YouTube, but also have your degree to fall in. Maybe it's accounting, maybe it's being a lawyer, but mm -hmm. I feel like as black and brown people, 
to your point, we should be pushing for degrees that are going to make a difference in our economy. And I think Chi Chi was going to elaborate on how do you feel about pushing for those high achieving jobs versus some of those um, stock market exchange and, you know, real estate flipping and things like that. Potentially. Yeah. So, OK. So as an investor, I wholeheartedly I couldn't agree more with everything you guys both said. Right. But you got to be smart about the situation as far as what are the numbers going to say? Out of all the youth, if, if we were to actually take out everybody who has a YouTube channel mm -hmm. and then find out the, the percentage of individuals making like profitable money, mm -hmm. the numbers would show you that you have a better chance becoming an engineer, a nurse, mm -hmm. a pharmacist, a, a MD than being successful on YouTube. The, because remember, there's some people that, that make a YouTube channel only, only have three videos out for their whole life. Well, would you tell that person to gamble and be a YouTuber? I don't think so. My point is this, I agree with you that there's going to be creative ways, but we need a foundation. See, that's yeah, the one I thing we that. don't have is yeah. we need a foundation. Then we can see that's yeah. if the first generation creates a foundation. If that is like right now being in, I'm trying to think like tech and tech, yeah. we need, yes, I'm not saying just do the science stuff yeah. necessarily, but whatever is in and see, and that's another thing that we do is become, we become so concrete thinkers. Yeah. We say, oh, well, you told me to major in, engin oh, in engineering and now AI is taking away my job. I told you that at that time. Yeah. yeah. That means yeah. when the times change more on, you got to change with the time. If mm -hmm. not, I'm telling you because this is the information I have today. Yeah. In five years, that information changes. In five years, I'm telling you, hey, you probably want to major in this. We need to major in this. As a community, we need to do that. And I think that's where we fall short. And we do the same thing when it comes to relationships too. We, yes. and this is to transition, we are concrete. We're saying, well, you say we should be rich, we should make money and we do this. But yeah, but I'm saying that from what a guy, from a, what a girl would want from a guy, not what a guy would want from a girl. Does that make um, sense? So it's, yeah, it's so the level of concrete thinking that we carry on in different yeah. aspects of our lives. And that segues us into the second part of that question, which was initially supposed to be the topic at hand, but we kind of did two topics in one. Either way, the second part of that question is, how do you feel about dates outside dating outside of your type? So when you say you have something you look for, whether it's <laughs> standards, whether it's... um the way that person carries themselves, the physical appeals, that's all part of standards. When you right. go against that, like, hey, let me try something new and see if it works. Right. Does that backfire? Because I've been hearing conversations where a woman doesn't trust a man that says, hey, you're not my normal type, but I want to see where this goes, you know, whatever. They don't feel secure in that because they feel like it backfires on them later. How okay, so I, I, that's an interesting, I've actually never looked at it from that perspective, but I will say this, a lot of the times, and I'll speak on what I've seen in women. Because for men, because unfortunately, in today's dating environment, men have so much leverage. And I don't think, honestly, I don't think women really understand how much leverage the men have, especially the men at the top 20%. And that's 20%, I'm talking financial-wise, right? Because that's the only number we can quantify. I don't want to say 20% morally, because how can you quantify that? Right. right. You can't put right. a number to that. So, and at the end of the day, you right. Looks. Well, see, and that's another problem because men aren't supposed to be the good looking one, but in our that's culture in, okay. in black culture, men have to be the good looking one. And you know, it's funny, mm -hmm. right? Because mm -hmm. that's what makes the African-American or black man more tr attractive to the other races because the other races don't uh, require their men to be as good looking as them. But Black women require Ooh. Black men to be as good looking, sometimes if not more, Ooh. so that you literally create the problem <laughs> that you have to fight, which is you create the monster of the man in multiple ways. And I'll explain this. Yeah. You create the monster of a man and then you turn around and say, oh, but why do you have to date? Why do you date up? Why shouldn't you? Why? And then I'm like, you do know because it was so hard to date you back in at 24, I had to work out extra. I had to make sure I had the money. And then guess what? I turn around and everyone and their mother wants you. So yeah. then how can you be mad at the guy for exercising his options when you made it that hard? So Ooh, that hold, was, on, was hard hold on now, Buka. You're getting a hey. little too spicy. Hey, Points are made. Hey, I'm not playing. Uh <laughs> Points are made. Oh, geez. Yeah, that's deep though, because it is true. A lot of people want like that handsome 
ju good looking men and when they now become that everybody wants them so they're options want them. like you know we ever and the and thing is you can have that guy right. you can have that guy if you have the leverage and mm -hmm. i think you know one of the things I'd say about understanding and learning money and learning how money works is, especially if you have to negotiate real estate deals and stuff like that, you learn what how literally leverage really affects you yeah. or helps you or hurts you. And okay. a so. lot of, I, I, you know, I hate to say this, but a lot of women don't understand how leverage works. Yeah. What they try to do to beat leverage is to insult in a, in a passive aggressive way. It's mm -hmm. the, Oh, oh, I bet you like this. Oh, I bet you don't even like this type of black girls. I'm like, no, it's not that. Instead of you just competing and you know you don't have the leverage now, you yeah. use that as like a as like a jab at the heart. But what I and I, I say this because it doesn't work. It doesn't it work. Worked. It worked 10, 20 years ago when men weren't aware. Yeah. Um, the more aware men are, the less all of those things would work. Sometimes it's so predictable. It was so funny. Um, I, I to get personal, I actually had someone ask me that, you know, and I can tell crazy story, but she literally asked me that today. I was like, how can you but, tell this? But I can tell is because she felt there was no way she can she she was probably capable. No, I don't want to say on on a level that I was on, because that to right. me is nonsense, right? She could tell that I probably wasn't attracted to her. So the mm -hmm. one thing she could do is like try to hit me with a jab that makes me, but I'm, we're too grown for that. So it doesn't work. So that's the question. So, oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Cece. You sure? Okay, let me jump in the real quick. Go ahead. Go um, ahead. That's what I tell some friends that ask me, like, you know, how did I get married and how, why, why am I so confident that my man won't look other places? Cause I, I'm going to tell you now, call me, call on, call me stupid, but, and I, my husband, no, my man can be in a house full of naked booty Judy's. And I'm a hundred percent sure know that he's not going to touch or he may not even look at them. Why? Because that leverage you spoke about. And the question is not too much. I mean, physical. Yeah. But mm -hmm. once you have like five, 10 babies, physical kind of. It goes away. Yeah. But exactly. it's about the leverage of what you do to their mind. I was just going to touch on that. So yeah, I, I hate to share this one because this is when men actually lose their leverage. Once a guy gets married and has kids, honestly, you kind of do give up some of that leverage to the woman because technically in the West, the laws are set up in a way where it does not favor men to mm. get a divorce. So mm. yes, he might, he's a man. And if he's a man that I know most men to be, he'll probably look. Let's just be honest. Right? Yeah, yeah, I'm not look. saying that. I'm not trying to mess up any homes. He, he might look. actually look. But look. the point is, he when he thinks that he does the calculation, yeah. the math ain't mathing. He's not gonna do <laughs> I already it. Told it's him. Not I worth already it. told him. Play it's with me. Worth uh, it. But see, that's the thing though. Is but but here's another catch though. Yeah. People forget. I, so I, I have I have this thing that I call the 90-10 rule. Okay. For everything we say, there's always 10% that doesn't apply. Let me give an example. Okay. So if I say, oh, most men like women that are curvy and mm. that are a BMI of 26 to 20, no, 24 to 26, this, that is going to be 90% like that because we have to speak in generalities. We can't go and say, well, 1% like this, 1% that's the possibility versus a probability plane, right? And as remember, I spoke about understanding leverage and increasing your potential or the, the, the pool of individuals. So I like to play in the 90% rule. I like to do what 90% of the women like mm. and not play in the 10%. Because let's just say this, there, there are women out there that really enjoy a rough, like I'm talking tattoos on the eye, eyelash, eyebrow type yeah. of guy, right? Mm -hmm but that's a very small percentage of women. I would not take on that personality and then expect most of the women to treat me the same way. Does that make sense? I'm going to take where 90% of the women are. Yeah. And, yeah. and of course yeah. that number, let me say this too, that 90, 10 is just, a, the number could be 99, one. You guys yeah. get the, point. the majority of the people are in this bracket. And I think a lot of times people play in the oh, well, I can probably get this type of guy that's my type. Mm. Does that make sense? As opposed to saying, okay, where do I really stand? And where's my 90% going to be? And a lot of times women don't want to do that. Hmm.
I think that's a really good point you make because I was having a conversation with a friend earlier and there's levels, there's ranges, and yeah. we know there's a bell curve. You agree? 100%. So to your point, when those men, especially our black men, because I mean, I, I've dated outside of my race. I'm not completely against it, but I mean, whatever, whatever the best person is for me. Can I ask you a question before you yeah. go forward? So why, aren't, why, why, why are you torn? Because I have a theory I'm, behind why you're torn. But why are I'm you not torn, necessarily not against it? I'm not necessarily torn. I think that black men are attracted to me and they approach me more. Now, the thing is when I'm on dating apps, which I've been on dating apps before, yeah, I get other here. races. Hmm? You get other races, you said? Yes, I'll get more other races that feel more comfortable with approaching me. But mm -hmm. out in public where I'm normally at, there's most likely African-American men yeah. or African men and I'm approached by them. So mm -hmm. for the last few years, I've been dating black men, but that's right. not to say that I haven't dated outside of my race before. Okay. I don't have a preference though, if you're asking. Yeah, but how do you feel about men dating, black men dating outside of the race? I personally feel like there's so many black women. I feel like if there was a shortage of black women compared to black men, then I can understand. But because mm -hmm. of my ratio, there's a shortage of black men. So okay. if I still want to have my options open for eligible bachelors that are up to par to my standards, then mm -hmm. I understand that I may have to open those doors because some women and my friends, they are only diehard African-American black men um, in general. Okay. So your and friends- lower are... their options. Gotcha. Oh, those are their options that they're choosing to have. Yeah. They only want, they do not date outside their race, black women. And I know black men do the same thing sometimes of course, as well. Of course. But no, sometimes I, I'm sure the numbers are similar because at the they end are. of the day, right. Most they people are. want to date their race because it's there's a commonality. There's a yes, it's a human nature, blend. right? So but we get here's it. The catch. Here's the but catch. What's the catch? The catch is this. Um, I always find it interesting that women will do that. It's and it's a very because if I were to ask you, are you okay with black women marrying outside of their race? You would say, oh yeah, because there's a shortage of black men. Okay, but even with the black men that do exist. There's still not, we're, we're still not seeing a carryover in the marriage rates in black women, and that's the question that we have to ask: Why? Isn't I mean, that on black men. There, okay, because let's just say there was only um, there was. I'm just going to use simple numbers for simple math. Let's just say there was 10 million black women and only 8 million black men in the U.S. We know this is not true, but let's just use that number. Mm -hmm. So I'm still saying, okay, well, how come? at least 60% of black women aren't getting married to at least 6 million of those men, at least 6 million. Cause that'd be 75% of the men are getting married. Let's just say 25% of men don't get married at all. Right. Let's just say they don't. How come that isn't? Cause black men are dating outside the race. <laughs> well, not at that number. Black men aren't marrying at 50% 50, 50 of all black men don't aren't marrying outside their race. And that's the problem. They're, no, but here's, I can tell you why. Why? It's the fact that the black women only want a specific, like all races of women want mm -hmm. a specific number of men, but in black culture, particularly mm -hmm. black women want a super small slip. That's what I was about to explain, men. Buka, as far as the conversation that I had with my friend earlier. But, yeah. but, but here's the catch though. They are not basing it off of things that are as important in actually succeeding in life. They're basing it off of superficial things yeah. and not the things that actually matter. I agree. That's the problem. And, and, here's the, and here's how I know this. Because if you think about it, if you know a guy is, we'll use the, the, the baby mama thing for an example. Mm -hmm. There is this notion that the guys that are, you know, they're either they're slanging it or whatever, but the, the women are still sleeping with this guy, knowing that he's already, he's a habitual poor decision maker. Mm. And you have to understand, like, why? Why would you do that? Yeah. It's because, so, because you remember, there's still a good amount of guys making 70, because I think it's, um, I don't, I don't want to misquote this, like at least like 50 or 60% of black male 
are in the middle class or make middle class money. Right, right. You can't tell me that 50% of those guys, which would be a good 30%, are either morally bad. Mm -hmm. Even if you do say that, well, then the other 30%, why aren't they attractive to the women? And the reason is this, because once again, Black women have a standard that the looks are just as important, just as important, which should not matter as much for women. I'm not saying you, you're you not going to be attractive, but if you have this unrealistic. That's true. Because yeah. it's funny because those same guys that you wouldn't want, if they dated outside their race, you would still be upset. I'm not upset because I don't want to use that, but you would still have something to say. But I'm like, what do you expect them to do? Wait around? If that guy is smart, he understands he has leverage. And once, and this is the crazy part. It's actually not even as bad as black women think yet. It will it's get really worse bad. if men really, because if, if men really wanted to date outside of our race, oh, it would be over. We could, because especially the ones that are successful, it's too easy. Mm. Because we've been, like I said, you created the monster. You created, you made the standard so high for us to get chosen that we, we, when we saw it, like, oh shit, for this guy to get this type of action, he had to be this, this, and this. So we became that. And guess what? Every race is like, oh my God, he's handsome. He's black. He's packing. Is this, is that he's got money. Is they want a piece of that. But the thing is they're willing to get down and compete. Hmm. Yeah. I think the main thing is once a man makes it to that level, then they are at an advantage to a certain degree, but the only advantage is Always. The, I mean, I say that loosely because there's attractive women too that's in that same field. But here's the catch though. In the okay, once again, you can't say men don't care about the money like that. Because no, the I'm not saying money. I'm talking okay, about attraction. Field, when you say field, what do you mean? Clarify. I'm saying that. attraction. Okay. I'm saying, like for me, mm -hmm. I want a man of a certain caliber. And I don't what's, what's that caliber? Explain. When I say caliber, they need to make at least as much as I make. And okay. I don't, that's not crazy. You, you don't have to disclose it. Okay. Yeah, I'm middle class is not that crazy. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I know because of the things that I put in, I could get a man of a higher caliber than maybe that I make financially. And it's not even about that. But okay. because I know that man it's may still be attracted mm -hmm. to me because of the way I look or carry myself, then although I may have that advantage of getting his attention, I also know because he's of that caliber, he's going to have other people fighting and competing for that attention. But see, I like how you said that. And you just did something that blows my mind. You said he's going to have other people of that caliber fighting and competing. You excluded yourself. No, I'm not excluding. I'm just saying there's other people but in you, my caliber. You, you could have easily said he's going to have people that I'm competing with for him. Because but I don't I, consider it competition. That's why I can't say that. They're on my same level, but they're not competition. I feel like there's oh, enough when, to go when, around. When, look, everybody's yeah. having it wrong, and I'm gonna tell you why right now. Okay, uh -huh. we gonna. You guys are sitting here talking about this physical attraction, this money and stuff. Is it? Am I stupid? Because when I was getting married, I wasn't thinking about that. And I think the problem is this: you guys are in your thirties. I got married when I was in my twenties. I didn't care about that money stuff. True. I didn't care about that looks. It was about who grabs my heart. And that's what that, and I went with the flow. But I think the problem is when you're, when you get married older, you have this routine. Mm -hmm. You have this lifestyle that you have been doing as an independent person. And I think that's what's clouding some things because I was young. So I didn't have that independent too much. So I was able to grow into this. But I think nowadays when people are, single for so long you have a routine you think too much stop mm -hmm. thinking go with it i don't care no you shouldn't care about the money forget the money forget the looks go so i'll say this flow. i agree can i interject and say this so that sounds well and dandy right mm -mm. I love the the motivational speech but here's why it's because if you think about it we've had the number one cause of divorce for years okay as well. been financial Financial. The problem so is if you matter. talk about financial issues, I, I'm I'm married, right? So when you have when when we talk, when we argue about finance, it gets rough. The issue is when you're hitting below the belt, because in the relationship, it's not always going to be fifty fifty. The husband may not be up all the time, but when they if they fall short, when the wife start kicking them down and disrespecting them, that's what causes the, the issue. So you it's are in the ten percent. 
You're in that. You remember that 90 10 rule? You are an anomaly. You are in the 10%. I disagree, Buka. No, and I'll say this the, the, the numbers speak for themselves, right? Because think about it. And here's why I say you, as a female, are in the 10%. Because what is the number one cause of divorces? Oh, it's finance. And who files divorces more times than not? Women. The lady. 80%, right? 85, 80, 80 something percent. Point is this, so it does matter. And here, and this is, I'll tell you this. For me, when I'm dating somebody, mm -hmm. I do two things. I want to know how they respond in stressful situations. Okay, tell us. It's very important because do they, are they petty? And this is going for how they deal with coworkers, friends, because human beings will show you who they are. Hmm. And it's 100% your responsibility to take them for what they show you. Don't try to add to it. Don't subtract it. So you are in the 10%. And once say, again, no, you know why I say that? Because I'm still as crazy as everybody else. Like don't, don't ever get it twisted about marriage. Marriage is rough. It's raw. It is. It's down but and you're dirty. not willing to leave. You're not looking to leave. At least I, from what, from what I'm hearing, right? Cause I don't want to interject and say anything, but you're not looking to leave. But most people in black in black America, Five years, the average marriage lasts five years and we get divorced and women leave 80% of the time. So that's another thing that we don't talk about for, for because one of the things that blows my mind is, you know, we're, everyone's pro-black. To me, that's nonsense. It's it's a fallacy. It's, it's like, even though we say it, but you're really not pro-black. Because if you were, once again, going back to the compete thing, you would compete to be the best version for the partner that you, you would compete for that partner because- Who's saying folks aren't? I'm you not, said that earlier. You, I'm no, telling no, y'all, so my mind back. is different. I'm no, not I'm competing. I regret, I'm not I, competing. I'm, I'm self-confident. That's the thing. You. That's my husband. That's the, so, the thing is this, that acting. only works, mm -hmm. that only works when you, you know, when, when, you, when you won the lottery in men. So I want to say this. There are, if you put- 10 guys in a line, right? Mm -hmm. They're going to be, there's always going to be that one guy or two guys, right? Once again, mm -hmm. that 10% rule applies here mm -hmm. that is willing to, hypothetically, I'm just going to use something. Let's say you you line up 10 guys. There's going to be that one guy who says, oh, he's willing to take, like he's willing to not fight the cause. He's willing to say, you know what? I'm just going to throw my hands you in. He'll let you do whatever. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean that's a majority of the men, but guess what? You got to ask yourself, what do the majority of the men want? And if it's funny, if it, think about it, it's funny that you meet the guys that you're meeting, they all kind of sound the same, but you don't want to listen to them. You're looking for the guy who is that one out of 10, 1% or 10%. You're looking for him. And there's a reason you don't find him. Stop doing that. Give the majority of the men what they want and don't don't try to fight them on it. Don't try to change their mind because they're not changing yours. They're just saying, because this is the one thing. And, you know, you spoke about the dating issues. I'll be honest with you. The men that are in the top 20% in black men, they're not crying about this stuff. They're really not. We're live Life is good. I'm just be honest with you. Like, I don't I'm know. Sweating it. Because men the say it's hard to find a good woman. And I no, 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 no. Well, because once again, they, look. They, they might be if they're look if they're really looking and they say okay I'm gonna cut off every I'm gonna put all of the races and put them every everyone's fair you're gonna find a good woman real quick you'll maybe not real quick it's it is, it is getting harder to find but you have it's not as difficult as it is for women to find this guy I don't know I feel like there's good men out there there's good women but I do agree that we have these unrealistic standards and we're looking for a small percentage but I'm not speaking has, for myself who, who has this unrealistic standards I feel both sides do because men want an Instagram model that loves God but let me can, can men I ask want you, a six five dude that's gonna be faithful can, can I ask a question signals, how many right? this is just be honest with yourself when you see in the real world black men married, how many of them are actually married to Instagram models? Here's the here's the biggest true. myth that women don't understand. That's men true. Don't actually marry the ten out of ten. We won't they do. Don't. It. Men, they don't. yes. The reason is you don't want the headache that comes with that. I men, guess. most men marry five, sixes, and sevens. Let's I've just heard. be honest. And I've no, heard. that's the I'm honest I'm truth. Thankful. So it blows my mind when like women. Now, of course, these are by men's ratings. Mm -hmm. Women rate themselves astronomically different. Like, this is true. 
if in a in a woman's mind, I'm a billionaire. Like, right? It, it's crazy. Like that that's how far up. But not, nonetheless, let's go back to the point. Point yeah, is, the point. in a man's mind, we're marrying five, sixes, and sevens. Unless mm-hmm. you are that guy, you're you're multimillionaire, you have it, then you can say you do an eight. But most men aren't marrying tens and nines because we know the headache that comes with that. Yeah, yeah. And vice versa. So, like ladies, vice versa. Ladies don't need. Like, when no, I, when, no, when I advise my single friends, I tell them, mm, see that it's one right there? That's cute. I hate to say it because they got the muscle, those, muscle. They got the mm-mm, stay away from that but one. See, but once again, the see the thing that makes a man a nine or a ten is going to heavily be weighed on his financial ability to provide. Let's just be no. honest. There, well, yes, there is. Yes, there is. Look, put put it this way. If we put a, um, let me try to find like a a, a, a pretty sad, a Jay-Z with another 45-year-old, um, let's, I don't know how old Jay-Z is, but 45-year-old guy with great morals, mm. 99, and, and, with, and take Jay-Z as is, as is. Hands down, if you're a betting person, I'm guaranteeing you 99% of women, okay, let's say, let's do the 90-10 thing, just to stay consistent. 90% of women are going to take him. So look, that's one of the biggest things. Admit that it matters. Guys, look, we admit that beauty matters. Yeah. We have to be able to live with that beauty and look at it as an investment. Okay, how poorly is she going to age going up and can I live? Because men are considering these things, FYI. So just admit that the finance matters because here's the thing. You can't waver on it. You can't say in one breath, it matters. Oh, I want a man who matches my level. Oh, what's my level? I make 75 grand a year. He has to make 75. Okay, well, he's automatically top 15%. So you're just using a backdoor way to say, I want an elite guy, but yet I don't want to say it that way because I don't want to give him the credit that he's elite because then that would put that I have to compete for him because if he's only top 15% and 90% of the women want him, I have to be one of 90%. You can think that you don't have to compete and you will lose. It's like, and that to me is one of the telling telling signs because the other, the women that actually win understand that they have to compete. And the men, to get to the level that we get to, we have to understand that we have to compete. Hmm. I had this video, um, I, I probably posted today where I talk about, men should understand that individually you are not comp- i'm not competing with anyone else right. individually exactly right when hold on individually but mm-hmm. when i when women see me i know i'm competing against other men for that woman there's a difference i'm not compete like when i'm going through my day and trying to get better i want to be the best version of myself mm-hmm. so i'm saying okay what are my weaknesses okay i got to be better about this okay i got to be better but no one cares about that women don't care about the process You care about the outcome because that's the guy you're going to meet. You're going to meet the outcome. So yes, individually, I'm working on myself. I'm not competing. I'm not saying, ah, CeCe's, she's, she's making a ton of money now. I I got it because that was, that's jealousy, right? Right, right. But I'd be foolish to think that a lady who's an eight out of 10, she's gorgeous. She works out. She's in great shape. And she is a true legit in men's eyes, eight out of 10. And she's got five, 10 guys, because guess what? She's going to have some guys pursuing her when she has leverage, because that's important. You do age out of leverage, FYI, as a woman. That's just how it works. Once she has leverage, she's going to pick the best guy. And I understand I am competing against those guys. Women cannot grasp that. I don't know if it's you can't grasp it or you don't want to grasp it. The same is reversed. It's flipped. You are competing against the women that are around me. And if you don't think so, that's cool because guess what? You're just one out of 50. That's that's so it's like, oh, you just qualified yourself. And I think that's a lot of times what happens is women don't see it that way. And then they disqualify themselves like, oh, he's he's narcissistic. No, he's not. He just has options. And he understood it when you had options that you were gonna pick. And most of the time women do pick. Question. Just like okay. the all the time. Yeah. So okay, I have two questions. First question is what is that leverage? Can you tell the vibe squad like what is that leverage so, that you're speaking about? What makes a lady have leverage? Okay, it's so a lady's on. leverage is going to come from her prime beauty, beauty prime. Okay, that's one. It's also going to come from is she young enough and fertile enough? Because I'll be honest with you, I I there's a certain age I just don't date. I I've been that way since since I was 30 years old. And since what? I played a game, I was like I'm 32. There's just an age I won't date. There's nothing wrong with that. I look because here's the catch. 
What oh, age so is I'll it? answer the question and then and then I'll okay. dive in further. So that's the most leverage women have for men that are successful, mm. right? For men that are successful, that's important to understand. If you go down the ladder in men, then there's other things he might consider that would give you leverage. He might consider what you do for a living. But mm. if a man does not consider what you do for a living, he's not going to give you that as a leverage card. Do you see what I'm okay. saying? Okay. It's like, if you don't, okay, let me ask you this. And this is a question. Do you, do you, do you gauge how feminine a man is when you're picking him? You don't care if he's like, oh, but I'm real girly. You would be like, I'm not giving you points for that. I get and, what I'm and look at it. I so you, you have to think about the level that the guy is at and say, mm -hmm. what would he find attractive and take your own bias out of it. Take your inclination to bash it or to, to say, whoa, why do you like that? No, 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 no. It's not about you. Cause guys had to get to that level say, okay, I can't change. I'm not, I'm six feet. I can't change. I'm not six, five, but I have to be able to live with it. And if a woman is that strong on that, I don't have leverage when it comes to height. Mm -hmm. I have to either overcompensate in one thing or say, you know what? I just can't win this game. I'll just go left. Hmm. I'm, I'm not going to, I'm see this. Did you notice what I did there? I didn't sit there and say, Oh, why does she like a guy that's six, five? That's so corny. Nope. I just leave because I know at the end of the day, it's, it's like a, it's, it's like investing. You don't, you get, you can't get stuck in a bad deal. You just move on. That's mm. the name and you've got to move on. What? So I, I'm, I'm so old. Yeah. I'm 32. Right. But I feel like I'm so old same old age as I know. I feel like I'm so old in tradition. What about swag? What about swag, y'all? Like, what about okay. the guy come up to you and you just like, you know, you probably, you were five out of 10, but you just swagging with your, you know, your talk and just oh. hey or whatever. So you think you know, the you woman know. has swag. Yeah, the woman has swag. Like, it's not, it's not oh, about the beauty. Okay. Not the beauty. It's about like the mouthpiece, about the, you know, the seduction part, whether you're four so, out of 10. Like, that yeah. don't count no more. It, it does count, and that's part of the beauty, though. That's yeah. part of the beauty, though. That's a part. I'm, I'm in, including that in that beauty, but that doesn't mm -hmm. give you leverage, okay. right? You have to think, like, maybe to some guys it will, but mm -hmm. as far as on the leverage, it's not going to. Because here's here's what I, I I would say. It all depends on what you say, though, right? Because that's gonna be like if if she's real soft and gives you the, oh my God, I just want to protect this thing, protect this person. Go, yeah. That's a different level of, leverage. that's leverage, but that's in the beauty. I guess in a beauty like, category. Of okay. course, because let's just be honest, right? If you saw a 600 pound dude and he had the bass voice, you're not turned on that. You are, you, <laughs> you, 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 yeah, you dry up right away. You're not even listening to what he asks. <laughs> you know right. what I mean? So the point is, it all depends. Like, yes. I wouldn't want a gorgeous woman to have a, hey, what's up? Mm -hmm. That She's going to lose some points for that. Let's just be right. honest. But if she has a <laughs> softness, and that goes a long way. So that's expected. This is very deep, though, really, y'all. Like, you know, I've never just had, like, these deep conversations other than my husband, who's, like, a Nigerian traditional man. So it's, like, different. And he grew but, up in a different culture. In a different yeah. culture. Um, so I'm just like, wow, this is different. Like, Cece, what you gathering from this? I'm gathering a lot. I'm taking it all in. I'm hearing Buka out. I'm kind of weighing out, like, some of the conversations I've had with friends. And I'm not saying that I disagree with you in any capacity. But I do believe that when it comes to competition, women don't really feel, they feel like they bring enough to the table, especially black women, because we've already worked hard That's enough. But I agree with Chi Chi's part too, when she says that because we are of a certain age now, we are overthinking a lot of things that if we were in our early twenties, we would not be considering because we would have that opportunity to grow with that person and build Bro. with that person. Yeah. So now we're expecting people to be already healed, sexy mm. with their bodies taking care of themselves financially okay. off on both ends i think okay. i think it's the age but, thing. but are the women doing the exact same thing okay, let's just take the beauty and the or the sexy body i beg to say that black men take better care of their bodies than black women that's a lie that. i can't speak for all black women but i know my immediate it, friend group, okay. they prioritize the that because they know they want to have that extra leverage okay. to get the men that are equivalent i'll tell you this I, I actually i love this discussion because i go to gym court i go to gym five six days right I right exactly but i'll say this you want to try something go to first of all i mean this is a simple thing you can just look at the numbers and say that 
the fitness level for black men and the, our weight has not increased exponentially, like maybe 2% in the last like, 50 years. Mm -hmm. The numbers are, I don't know the exact numbers, but our weight has not increased. The average, there's too many obese black women compared to black men. Because y'all like big booty, big girls. Like y'all want- No, see, once again, see, you're adding no, it's something. Not, it's not that, it's because- You like dad bods, but you don't. You, it's a small, once again, it's the, no, you don't. I know you don't. I was just making that kind of, the point is, once again, don't think about it this way. How many how many times have you seen a black man married to the big booty girl from Instagram? You almost the funny thing is those girls actually never get married. Ooh, not for the think about that. How many of these Instagram models actually get chosen? The real life is yes, it'll be they're fun, but you can't do anything with that. Hmm. Look, well, I think it's the biggest cop out to have that mentality as a woman because you know, you have to see this, but we give them fake attention. Yes, guys will give you. Remember this: when guys fake see a girl, we put you in two different categories right away. I'll sleep with you, or I might take this seriously. To I will take this serious. The one I'll sleep with you. Oh, guys will ride that train forever. We will, and you know. You you can even think you did the thirty day thing with him, which is nonsense, by the way. But watch that episode. Ah. You can um you can think you uh you 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 waited long enough. It doesn't matter. You're in that category. He's gonna hit it and quit. Hmm. And that's why I, when I hear women say, "Oh, he's narcissist," I'm like, "Dude, he he put you in that category a long time ago." And it's you know why he put you in that category? Why? Yes, because of you. Hmm. You showed up in that category to him. How Those Instagram models they show up in that category in our minds. We automatically know, oh, cool, this is fun, but I'm not marrying it. Mm. Once again, men marry a certain type of girl. So you have to you have to be the the type of girl that the guys are looking for because the guys are asking for the same stuff. We're looking for women that are feminine. We're looking mm. fitness is important, and unfortunately, it's not in high demand in our community. It's really not. Hmm. It's, well, it's getting cool. better. We're getting better with that. But we want to go ahead and wrap up with just one more topic because I yeah. know we've been conversing and there's so many things we can continue to feed off of mm -hmm. because this is just organic. But my last question for you, Buka, from a mm -hmm. male standpoint, do men fantasize relationships? Do they fantasize marriage the way women do from your knowledge? Uh, okay, so that's a two part. I'm going to say yes. Okay. Right. As, we, as a man gets older... You're going to, especially if you are a man on a, on a path to becoming successful or you want to attain level of success, you will see that having a base, mm -hmm. family, something that grounds you, wife, kids, right? You, especially if you are successful, the more successful you are, you want a legacy. You want to see something that looks like you, someone that looks like you, you want to see kids. So yes, men do want it, but not when we're young, not when in our 20s, our minds just aren't wired that way to want it. Mm. Now, the problem is, the disconnect is, women want it, but they should have, they should want it early because, mm. at, because that's when you have the leverage. So you, mm. you should want it earlier because you are not wired the same way as your, the, our God, the creator did not make you the same way he made men. Okay. Right? So but you, if you men are to, ready, when they're young, but the women's supposed to be ready when they're young. Are you yeah, saying- because you're not marrying the guy. That, look, back home, the men never married their age mates. It just never happened like that. There's yeah. always, we oh, I, actually, when I, my parents are 10 years apart, right? Um, so I, I always understood that. I thought that was normal. And my uncles, aunts, the same way. Very few married close to age, right? And I, I almost thought we all thought, because even- Back I in, think that my husband's 10 years older than me too. Exactly. So, and it's funny because it works, right? But what ends up happening is if you don't, if, if you're in college and you don't scoop that guy up right then and there, hmm. you go to the open market, it's a, it, it's a, it's a competing market. It's, it's just a point. You know, once again, he's, he has more, you know, he has more, you know, um, he has more options and, and so do you, but you don't see that your time is shorter and once again, you cannot pressure, you're not going to be able to bash dudes in the submission. It's not going right. to work. And mm -hmm. it's a bad way because it only makes you more salty. It only makes mm -hmm. you more upset. FYI. Yeah. So yeah. 
So yeah, That's men good. do want men do want marriage. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, there That's he good has it. Let's leave it at that. Yes. Well, Bob Squad, we have loaded you up with a lot of gems today, honey. So please go in the comments. Let's talk about it. Don't be quiet in those comments. This is a lot of information right now so let's talk about it. do you agree what Buka's talking about do you uh, do you disagree let's talk about it. thanks for joining us Buka. we appreciate all of your male energy and giving us your perspective this was a very healthy conversation hopefully you'll join us again with yeah and uh make sure the audience to follow me on instagram and on youtube as well uh, the scrub investor on youtube and luca underscore the scrub investor on instagram